Hey guys, how's it going? It's Tifty here. What's better, this one or this one? The quickie or the sticky? Clearly the sticky bomb launcher, right? Well, I've been collecting some data on my gameplay and the results have blown my mind. You may remember I made a video previously comparing the iron bomber and stock grenade launcher where I recorded a bunch of data and found out which I was doing the most damage with. So I've used the same method today to try and discover which weapon the quickie bomb launcher or sticky bomb launcher I was doing the most damage with. My assumption going in was that of course the sticky bomb launcher would outperform the quickie bomb launcher but I was curious to see as to how much that was the case. So for this video I'm going to run through the method, some of the caveats, then I'm going to go through the results and I'm going to look at a very quick comparison table looking at some of the different features and the pros and cons of each weapon. If you want to skip to a section and get right to the juicy stuff I've added timestamps below but it's worth sticking around so I can explain exactly how I got to these results. So let me explain the method I use and let me go over a few caveats I wanted to mention. So I played 16 games with each weapon. Obviously the more games the better, but I had to draw the line somewhere for my own sanity. I recorded how long I had been playing in each round. I recorded the total damage figure as well as the kills and points I accumulated. I played eight rounds of attack and eight rounds of defense because one thing I learned from the iron bomber and grenade launcher video I did is that you tend to do more damage when attacking which was kind of surprising to me. I removed any crazy outliers so any games where it was a complete and utter roll for instance if I couldn't even get out of spawn or if there were hackers on the enemy team I of course avoided using my grenade launchers at all costs and I tried to avoid using melee too although I think once or twice I just couldn't resist. And finally for the majority of games I equipped a lovely pair of boots. Now there are a few caveats I wanted to mention. I only played 16 games with each weapon because as I said I had to draw the line somewhere but in terms of minutes this was actually quite a considerable amount of time. Now I tried to google how you determine statistical significance and when I saw the equation nope. I felt a little bit sick so hopefully one of you guys might be able to help me out here. If there's anyone watching who might have a better understanding of you know how many would be the ideal amount of games or how many minutes you'd have to play to be really certain that these results were statistically significant I'd love to hear from you. In terms of other things to mention there were of course several uncontrollable variables for example lag, my fatigue, if I happen to have a great pocket medic in one game, the team balance, that kind of thing, things that were out of my control that hopefully get ironed out based on the quantity of games that I played. Also it's worth noting that I'm not as experienced with the quickie bomb launcher, it's not a weapon I tend to use very often. And of course the viability of one of these weapons may be very map dependent. I played purely on bad water which is a very wide open payload map. It could be that one of the two weapons performs much better on Koth for example or on a much more choke heavy map. And finally this of course only measures which is better with my particular playstyle. It might be that for one of you guys watching and the way you guys play the results don't apply in the same way. Okay so these were the first set of results I got and they completely blew my mind to such an extent that I assumed something must be off. As you can see the quickie bomb launcher was far outperforming the sticky bomb launcher in terms of damage per minute to such an extent that I just had to go back and take a look to see if there were any crazy outliers. So that's exactly what I did and I went through all the games I played with the quickie bomb launcher and it turns out that I did in fact find a crazy game 1000 damage per minute which is a little bit mental and I did actually recall having a really good game with a pocket medic who had the Kritzkrieg so I assume that this was that very game and so I've decided to remove this from the results because you expect to see three or four hundred damage per minute but 1000 damage per minute is a little bit mental. So after removing that outlier we end up with the following results. So the kills per minute is pretty much the same which is kind of interesting. The points per minute probably not worth going into that in too much detail. What we really want to do is focus on the damage per minute and still despite removing that one crazy game the quickie bomb launcher is outperforming the sticky bomb launcher and it might not seem by too much but just think every minute of the game I'm putting out that much more damage and that very quickly builds up. You got to remember this is an overall damage in a game this is damage every single minute within a game so this figure is very suggestive of how well you're doing and how effective you're being. So I wanted to have a little think and a little speculate as to why this might be the case and I'd love to of course hear your thoughts on this as well. 
because what's crazy is that it felt like I was doing more damage with the sticky bomb launcher. Now this could have been confirmation bias at play. I may have just been noticing those really good moments when I was using the sticky bomb launcher. It's also worth noting that it felt like I was constantly reloading with the quickie bomb launcher. So it kind of felt quite frustrating at times where I really wanted to be putting out damage, but I had to wait to reload. And maybe that frustration kind of stuck in my mind. One theory as to why I was doing more damage with the quickie bomb launcher is that potentially I was being more considerate with my shots knowing that I only had four of them, and the fact that I had more control over them, being able to shoot them at greater distances much more easily, meant that maybe I was being more considerate with them. I think it really boils down to the damage I was doing at very close range and very long range, because that's kind of where the quickie bomb launcher excels. And because it's so difficult to say, you know, one gun is better than the other, I wanted to create a little comparison table for you guys so we could discuss, you know, the pros and cons of each, where each one outshines the other. This is based of course on my opinion so I'd love to hear if you disagree with me on any of these points in the comments below. So let's start off with the top one. This is the most important thing, the DPS, and if these results are anything to go by, on this map with my playstyle, the quickie bomb launcher wins over the sticky bomb launcher. Next up we have mobility, which is probably the second most important thing that your secondary provides to you. In this case they're both completely equally viable. But next up is traps. Now this is where I think the sticky bomb launcher outperforms the quickie bomb launcher. Because it has eight shots and because those stickies are doing more damage although you can actually lay eight sticky bombs down with either weapon it just means you have to reload a little bit with the quickie bomb launcher so this means at the very beginning of the round when you're laying your trap I found that either weapon did the job. You could still put a decent trap down on a couple of spawn doors, no problem. So the next two line items refer to short and long range combat. And these kind of feed in to the overall DPS. And this is where I think the quickie bomb launcher really shines. And this is where you're kind of getting that extra damage in. Obviously at short range, because of the shorter arm time, that's kind of the point of the weapon. It's expected that you'll do more damage, you know, with those scouts coming up in your face, that kind of thing. But what I really noticed during these games is that I was putting out more damage at really long range as well. I was able to sticky snipe very quickly enemies in the distance with this quickie bomb launcher. In terms of sustain, for long drawn out fights, I think the sticky bomb launcher is potentially favorable, simply because you have that additional ammo. So if you're having a big brawl, say on a cough map, with several opponents, like I said earlier, you very quickly find yourself constantly reloading with the quickie bomb launcher, which can get very frustrating. And just for fun, I thought I'd end on a couple of subjective items, the visual design and the sound effects. Now, the visual design, they both look pretty beautiful. The sticky bomb launcher is pretty much an icon at this point, although I do have to say, the actual sticky bombs themselves, the ones for the quickie bomb launcher, look pretty awesome, very spiky. I like them a lot. But I'm gonna give it to the sticky bomb launcher because I feel bad for him. And finally, the sound effects, and um, this is the most important part of the whole video. This clearly goes to the sticky bomb launcher as well because I don't know if you guys have heard the weird sound effects that the quickie bomb launcher makes. It's like a, a weird double echoey sound. I don't like it, okay? I don't like it one bit. So before we finish, stickies versus grenades. Ooh. So I thought it would be interesting to compare the results from this video to the results from my previous video on the Iron Bomber versus the Grenade Launcher. And it turns out that on average, which is the bar to the far right, I seem to do ever so slightly more damage with grenades, which has also blown my mind because I'm always harping on about how you can do more reliable damage with the Sticky Bomb Launcher. But maybe this only applies to the highest level of TF2 gameplay in a competitive environment and not so much to when you're just jumping around Badwater in a pub. So on the left hand side we have the two sticky bomb launchers and on the right hand side we have the two grenade launchers. And out of all these four weapons, based on these results, on this map it seems like I'm doing the most damage with the iron bomber, which is kind of interesting. I guess it is a very open map so that does have a huge effect on these results. But in second place here is the quickie bomb launcher. So you could argue that my strongest loadout would be the quickie bomb launcher and the iron bomber. Although would the iron bomber be as effective without the sticky jumper? I don't know, difficult to say without doing another test. And I don't particularly want to play Badwater another 32 times right now.
But my conclusion for this video is that I really need to start trying out the Quickie Bomb Launcher a little bit more and giving it a bit more credit. I think the Quickie Bomb Launcher excels at short range combat, at sticky sniping. I also found that it was great for when you were bombing the enemy because again the short arm time allows you to detonate very quickly as you're jumping onto the enemy. And the Sticky Bomb Launcher is potentially better at longer drawn out fights, it has better sustain and is potentially better at setting traps. But this is all map dependent and will also differ from personal person to person. You might be able to put out more damage with the sticky bomb launcher, who knows. The most important thing is to use whatever you're having the most fun with. That's the main thing, eh? That's the main thing. Ah, let's all have a hug. Before we end the video, a few very quick thank yous to Frank the Tank, Rudolph, Fleeky and Zoom for all your weapon donations and a big thank you to all my Patreons. There's a link down below if you're interested to learn more about that. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one.